So, you have just finished Surah Al-Fatiha and you finished your other Surah of the Qur'an you're now about to do what? You're about to go into bowing, to ruku'a. What should you do here? Before you bow, and this is a sunnah that a lot of Muslims are quite unfamiliar with, you should observe a small period of silence just before you move down into your ruku'a, you're bowing. And subhanAllah, you see sometimes people, they skip this period of silence, right? So as they are finishing off the recitation of the Qur'an, they're beginning to make that move, that transition into bowing. Simultaneously. I'll give you an example. So they are reciting. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ So the hands go up midway of the surah before you finish reciting. And you're moving as you're reciting. Right? This wasn't the way of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would finish his recitation of the second surah and then he would pause and he would observe a short period of silence. The scholars, they say, a short period of silence enough for you to catch your breath. And then you say, Allahu Akbar, and you move down into bowing. Salah is generally defined by a calm demeanor, by tranquility, sukoon, and tuma'nina. Uh, Samura ibn Jundub, the companion, he said, he narrates, أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ كَانَتْ لَهُ سَكْتَتَانِ يعني في الصلاة سكتة إذا كبر للأولى لتكبيرة الإحرام وسكتة إذا فرغ من القراءة في السورة الثانية قبل أن يركع He said the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم had two moments of pausing two periods of silence that he would observe in salah. The first of them is when he said Allahu Akbar and he began his salah. A short period of silence. He said the second period of silence that he would observe is when he finishes his recitation of the Quran of the second surah just before he bows. This is what we are speaking about now. So just before he bow, he would separate his standing from his bowing with a short moment of Silence. This is the sunnah. And you say, Allahu Akbar. And now you come down into your position of bowing. Ruku'a. And this is a position of utmost humility and submission to Allah Jalla Jalalu. We are prohibited from bowing to anyone or anything, whether it's before a karate confrontation or taekwondo or its likes, you don't bow as a Muslim. Because this is a form of respect and worse still glorification that is only permissible and befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty, He said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ From the signs of Allah is the night and the day. وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرِ And the sun and the moon. لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرِ Don't prostrate to the sun or the moon. Bowing can be of glorification or it could be of giving respect if it's a bowing of glorification then there is a unanimous opinion between the scholars of Islam that doing it for another person or something is a form of shirk associating a partner with Allah that could push someone out of the fold of Islam if however that bowing is out of respect not for worship or glorification and if this is done for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the majority of the scholars, the majority are of the view that this is a sin, that this is a sin, it is prohibited. You go into bowing, and here in your ruku'a, you will raise your hands before you go down into bowing, according to some of the scholars of the madahib that you should raise your hands again. Others, they say, no, you don't raise your hands. You only raise your hands once when you begin your salah, and you don't raise it again. Others, they say, no, you raise your hands several times, and this is one of them. Allahu Akbar, you're now going down into bowing. And you will bend down to around 90 degrees, and you will firmly clasp your hands onto your knees as you bow, and you will spread out your fingers equal distance apart, and you will create a space between your arms and your torso, your body, when you are bowing, and you will straighten your back as much as is naturally possible. You will not arch it intentionally. You will straighten it as the back of the Prophet ﷺ was. When he was bowing, it was described that if you 
were to pour water over his back when he bowed, that water wouldn't come to the ground. I.e. to say that his back was generally straight and his head was level with his back. So he wasn't raising his head as some brothers they do in salah, raising his head in bowing, nor was he dropping it. His head was level with his back as he bowed and he would look into the area of prostration as he is bowing. So it's a phenom phenomenal act of worship. And it's also a very humbling act of worship. Such that if you see a man bowing to another, you instantly know that there is something enormous happening there. Because we recognize that it is a position of vulnerability and glorification that should only go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al ruku ah. And there in your bowing, what will you say? You will say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, meaning how perfect is my Lord, the Magnificent, three times, or the Prophet would recite it more than three times. And we spoke about the word Subhana, didn't we? Subhana, which is the idea of Tanzih, Tab'eed, declaring the transcendence of Allah above all deficiencies. When you say Subhanallah, you are saying, how far is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of the deficiencies that people attribute to him? Subhana, Rabbi, my Lord, Rabbi, look at the pronoun that's added here. Rabbi, the ya, meaning my Rabb, my Lord, to create that feeling of warmth, and closeness and intimacy between you and your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. That yes, this is Rabbul Alameen, as you recited in Al-Fatiha earlier, Alhamdulillahi, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the world, but He is also Rabbi, He is also my individual Lord. He is my Lord, who nurtures me, who provides me, who clothes me, who cures me when I'm ill, who guides me, who teaches me, who forgives me. Rabbi, the magnificent al azim This is one of the dhikrs that you recite in your bowing. Another one of the adhkar, this is phenomenal, subhanallah. Our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa would say, in his salah, when he is bowing, when he is bowing, remember this if you can, he would say in his ruku'ah, in his bowing, Allahumma laka raka'at, O oh Allah, to you I have bowed. Wa bika amant, and in you I have believed. Wa laka aslamt, and to you I have submitted. Listen. خشع لك سمعي وبصري ومخي وعظمي وعصبي. He said, all of my hearing and my seeing and my mind and my bones and my nerves have humbled themselves to you, O oh Allah. Subhanallah. It's phenomenal. You are remembering that Allah is Azim, the great magnificent one, as you bow yourself in that position of vulnerability. So it's almost as if you are decreasing your stature, minimizing your importance, and in that same position, look at the paradox, you are saying, whilst I am this, Allah is al azim the most magnificent. This creates a, a feeling of iftiqar and bankruptcy and need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How every dhikr remembrance has been placed with hikmah in different parts of the salah. It's a life-changing exp experience salah if you understand it. Subhana Rabbi al azim Bismillah. This is in his bowing. And now he is ready to raise his head. You as a Muslim, now that you have finished from your bowing, you're ready to raise from the bowing position to the standing. And what is interesting here, subhanallah, is that you will not say Allahu Akbar. In most of the movements of salah, with the exception to salam, salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum, you are saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, but Allah is greater. On this occasion, you will not say Allahu Akbar. You will raise your head and you will say what? Ihki, <laughs> say. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Which means Allah responds to those who praise Him. And now that you're standing peacefully, what will you say? Rabbana. Walak alhamd, O our Lord, all praise belongs to you. So instead of saying Allahu Akbar, you're saying Alhamdulillah. You're praising Allah. What is the relevance? What is the occasion? What's changed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His wisdom has created many different creatures out there. 
Some of them walk on two legs. Some of them walk on all fours. Some of them crawl and slither on their stomachs. Some of them swim in the sea. Some of them fly in the air. And the most dignified of them all is the one who stands upright with his back straight roaming the earth. Allah said, Wallahu khalaqa kulla dabbatin min ma. Allah created every moving creation from water. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى بَطْنِهِ Some of them, they walk on their bellies. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى رِجْلَيْنِ Some creatures walk on two feet. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى أَرْبَعَ Some of them, they walk on all fours. يَخْلُقُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاء Allah creates as He wills. And from all of this, the most dignified of them all, the most beautiful to look at is insan, the human being whom Allah has dignified. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah said, we've honored the son of Adam. And there as he walks the earth, she walks the earth with their back straight. So you were bowing a moment ago, and then you raise your head, and there you remember how kind and gracious Allah Almighty was upon you when he allowed you to stand in this dignified way. Beware of becoming arrogant. That you stand in this beautiful position. And so you say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is my creation. This is how I walk. This is how I live. I don't live bowing or arched or crawling on my belly. I am an upright standing human being. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. That's one way to look at it. But there is a deeper way to look at it as well. Why you praise Allah here instead of saying Allahu Akbar. Has anyone thought about it? We've previously established that when you are making dua, when you're making requests from Allah, it should be preceded with what? Praise of Allah. This is the adab, these are the manners. Before you make a request from your Lord, you should first praise Him as He deserves, and then you make your request. Correct? And we saw this in Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha, the first half of the surah, is pure praise of Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most compassionate, the most merciful. You praise Him. Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'im. Now that you've praised Him with Hamd, you now say what? Ihdin Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. You make your request after you've unlocked the heavens with praise. Therefore, you are now standing. What comes after standing in Salah? What awaits you now? Prostration. And what is prostration defined by? What is prostration all about? Dua. Making requests from Allah. Isn't it that the Prophet ﷺ said that the nearest you can be to Allah is when you are prostrating. So make a lot of dua. So in preparation for the dua that you're going to make when you're prostrating, you start praising Allah. You say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're now ready to fall into prostration, the grand finale of salah, and to start making requests from your Lord subhanallah. Amazing subhanallah. So you say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. There is a dua here that we should memorize. It's Sahih al-Bukhari on the authority of Rifa'a ibn Rafi'a that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was leading the companions and he came up from the bowing position our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he said Sami'allahu liman hamida Allah responds to those who praise him and then there was a man behind by the name of Rifa'a and what did he say? there was a man behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who responded and he said رَبَّنَا وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ حَمْدًا كَثِيرًا طَيِّبًا مُبَارَكًا فِي Oh my Lord, all praise belongs to you. An abundant praise, a pure praise, a blessed praise. And when the Prophet ﷺ finished his salah, he looked to his companion and he said, he said, who said that? And they thought they were in trouble. Who just said that? I didn't teach him to say that. Who said that? And one man, he said, it was me, O Messenger of Allah. And then he says to him the following, astonishing, subhanAllah. He said, رَأَيْتُ بِضْعَةً وَثَلَاثِينَ مَلَكًا يَبْتَدِرُونَهَا أَيُّهُمْ يَكْتُبُ أَوَّلُ He said, I saw 30-something angels competing with one another as per who will be the first to write it down. حَمْدًا كَثِيرًا طَيِّبًا مُبَارَكًا فِي Remember this. You say that when you come up from your, from your bowing. Now you are ready for the grand finale of the salah. La ilaha illallah. You're ready now for the ultimate pillar of your prayer. 
As Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, everything leading up to salah, he said, everything leading up to this moment was a preparation for the sujood, the preparation. All of it was just a build-up. It's a prelude for this position of prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there can be no position, no posture, no movement, no expression that is more powerful in expressing your need, your iftiqar, your bankruptcy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than this position of prostration. La ilaha illallah. You prostrate now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say Allahu Akbar. And here, before we speak about what a person should do and how they should behave in prostration, I want to share with you a few introductions about sujood for you to understand the reality of what you are now doing. What should you and I remember when we fall into sujood prostration? Remember the following. Remember number one that now that you are in sujood prostration, you are part of a much bigger system around you that is also prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The universe in its enormity and the creation in its limitlessness and the things that we know and we don't know. The movable, the immovable, the visible, the invisible, the past, present and the future. They all prostrate to Al-Malik, the King, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whether we realize it or not. And now that you are prostrating in sujood, you are part of this grand tapestry. You're part of this huge cosmic rhythm, all of which is prostrating to him. You have now joined them. And that is why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, Alam tara anna Allah yasjudu lahu man fi samawati wa man fi lahu. Don't you see that everything in the heavens and the earth prostrates to Allah? Wa shamsu wal qamar, and so does the sun and moon. Wa nujum wal jibal, and so do the stars and the mountains. Wa shajaru wal dawab. And so do the trees and the moving creatures. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ And so do many people. Even the kuffar, the disbelievers in Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, Allah says, وَظِلَالُهُمْ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ Even their shadows prostrate to me in the mornings and evenings. This is Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. So when you say Allahu Akbar and you fall into sujood, notice, realize the rhythm that you are now part of. You're prostrating to Allah Almighty within a galaxy, within a universe, a creation, all of which has agreed that Allah Almighty is worthy of sujood. What else should you remember now that you've prostrated? Remember that you are now enjoying one of the greatest anxiety relieving actions that you can do in your life. That is to prostrate to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before visiting the clinic, the psychologist, and whoever they may be, think about visiting the prayer mat and go into sujood and release your burdens there. And that is why Allah Almighty said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who experienced monumental pressure in his life from every perspective, Allah said to him, giving him the solution, We know, O Prophet, that your heart is constricted because of what they say. We know it hurts you. What is the solution? He said, bihamdi rabbika wa kum min as So glorify the praise of your Lord and be of those who prostrate. Glorify your Lord and be of those who make sujood. That is where the problems of the world are lifted. On the prayer matters you prostrate to Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. What else should I remember as I prostrate? Remember that this is the nearest you can be to Allah. For those who ask about how I can draw to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, we don't need a futile discussion of rockets and traveling at the speed of light and uh, space suits and shuttles and aircrafts and rockets. You don't need any of that. Muslim narrates on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدِ فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ he said, the nearest a person can be to his Lord is when he is prostrating. He said, so make abundant dua. And that's why Allah said to him in the Quran, Wasjud waqtarib. Wasjud waqtarib. Kalla la tuti'ahu wasjud waqtarib. Prostrate and draw near to me, Allah said. What else are you to remember when you say Allahu Akbar and your body now descends into sujood, into prostration? Remember. 
that you are doing something that causes a lot of depression and grief to shaitan when he sees you prostrating. Nothing can stab him in the heart with more pain than to see a Muslim who is prostrating to Allah Jalla Jalalu. And that is why Muslim narrates on the authority of Abu Hurairah that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا قَرَأَ الْعَبْدُ آيَةَ السَّجْدَةِ فَسَجَدَ اِعْتَزَلَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَبْكِي يَقُولُ يَا وَيْلَهُ أُمِرَ بِالسُّجُودِ فَسَجَدَ فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأُمِرْتُ بِالسُّجُودِ فَعَصَيْتُ فَلِيَ النَّارِ he said, when man recites the verses of sajda in the Qur'an, the verses that require from your prostration, and then you prostrate, he said, shaitan runs away crying. اِعْتَزَلَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَبْكِي Shaitan withdraws himself from the scene, imagine crying. And he says to himself, oh woe to me, what have I done? Man was instructed by Allah to prostrate, and he prostrated, so he goes to paradise. And I was instructed to prostrate, but I disobeyed, and so I'm going to hell. Remember that when you're doing sujood. And remember that one of the best ways and the greatest shortcuts of life for those who want to be close to an nabiyul kareem the Honorable Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the Day of Judgment is to maximize your prostrations in the life of this world today. And that is why Muslim narrates on the authority of Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami. He said that I used to serve the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I used to bring him water to purify himself for wudu. And on one of those occasions, when we were alone, he said to me, Salni, make a request. Make a request. What do you need? What's, what's your problems in life? How can I help you? And look at the scholarly and intelligent muwaffaq answer of Rabi'ah. He said, As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. My only request is that I am with you in jannah. I don't want anything else from this world. I just want to be with you in paradise. He said to him, Awa ghayra dhalik, anything else? He said, huwa dhak, it's just that. So what did he say to him? He said, fa'anni ala, kath- ala nafsika bi kathratis sujood. So help me fulfill this request of yours by maximizing your sujood, your prostration. Prostrate a lot to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That way you will be with me in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Remember these things as you prostrate, my brother, my sister. Remember that when you fall to the ground and you press your forehead onto the floor, you're bonding with the earth beneath you. You are remembering no less than five times a day as you are in this vulnerable state that I was created from this earth. My beginning was from here. So humble yourself, O my soul, when you buy and you sell and you publish your videos and you boast of your profile, Remember, with your face on the ground, I came from here, meaning my father Adam, he was created from the soil of the earth. And as you prostrate, you remember that not only is this my beginning, my end will be here as well, after the passage of just a few years. This earth is going to be opened up for me and I will be leveled six feet under, and I will be back to the soil that I was created from. Minha khalaqnakum, Allah said, from the earth we created you. وَفِيهَا نُعَيْدُكُمْ أَنْ إِنَّ أَرْثَ وِي شَالْ رِتَانْ يُوْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى And from the earth we're going to resurrect you again. Remember that as you prostrate to Allah Jalla Jalla I am from here. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ آدَمَ Allah said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every human being is from Adam. He said, وَآدَمُ مِنْ تُرَابًا Adam was created from the soil. Every day you bow or you prostrate, you're bonding with the earth. You're reminding yourselves of these values, of these realities. And you remember there as you prostrate that every part of your body is now engaging in sujood. See, it's amazing, subhanallah. When you are standing, some of your limbs are engaged. When you are bowing, some of your limbs are engaged. Similarly, when you are sitting, yet when you are prostrating, subhanallah, every part of your body is engaged in the process. Your forehead, your nose, your face, your torso, your hands, your toes, your knees, your arms, your thighs, everything is engaged to put you in this position of prostration, which is a reminder that every part of your essence, every drop of blood in your veins, every nerve in your body, every part of your bone, every inch down to every atom belongs to Allah. You are His. These limbs of yours are on loan and they're going to be returned to the gift 
to the Creator and He's going to ask about them. You remember this as you prostrate. I am the possession of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. You remember that. It's not mine to behave with this limb, this apparatus, this amazing vehicle as I wish and as I choose. Therefore, it doesn't make sense that you raise your head from prostration and you now look at what you wish and you listen to what you wish and you talk as you wish and you buy and sell as you wish you dress and undress as you wish it's not yours it's not mine somebody else's and so Jude is a daily and nightly reminder of this you as a being you are on loan that has been given to you as an amana a trust for a short period of time then you will meet Allah and stand before the king and the examination will begin and he will interrogate you about this loan. In what state are you returning it back to me? And what good deeds have you used this vehicle with? And what sins are you meeting me with? A daily reminder. So sujood is a miracle from Allah Jalla Jalla. In prostration is the release of your burdens. In prostration is the removal of your anxieties. In prostration is where the weight of the life of this world is lifted. Where dua is answered. Where sukoon, tranquility is found, where peace of mind, peace of body, peace of soul, they are all discovered there as you prostrate to Allah. That's where souls are healed. It's the balm of the injured heart. It is there in prostration. Tell him how you feel. Speak to your Lord, not just as a creator, as a mighty Rabb, yes, but also as a friend who you love who you need, who you adore, tell him about your aspirations. Tell him what you fear. Tell him those who are after you. Tell him what makes you nervous, what keeps you up at night. Tell him what you want to do with your life. Tell him what you feel you've missed out on. This is an opportunity to communicate with your Lord in a way that no one can achieve it but the man or the woman who are in a position of sujood. Notice how when you are prostrating, it's very difficult to peep from one side to the other and see what's happening around you. It's lights out, as if every part of your existence has been shut down on that moment so that you focus on one thing and one thing alone, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَهَىٰ Allah said, the outcome, the end will be to your Lord. Sujood is a reminder of that. See how much we are missing out on if we don't unlock these meanings. And we pray and we bow and prostrate and we recite Quran and we're sometimes unaware of these values. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has guided us to this information. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to apply it and to experience it and to make each salah we perform better than the one before it. Ameen. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Walhamdulillah.